Hello everyone and welcome back to another day, another week here at the Damage Report under a lockdown. Uh, it's a special day, as every Monday is, because Francesca Fiorentini joins us. How's it going, Francesca? Hello, I am... I don't know anymore. I've lost count of the days and the weeks on purpose, mm -hmm. actually. because a I, lot of them. As, yeah, I don't want to know. Yeah, I mean, the, the we were just talking before we started about, um, you know, trying to have things that you can sort of, like, mark the passage of time with. Like, you, we have yeah. fantastic Mondays here. Um, you also now have made Sundays a little bit more exciting for everyone. Can you tell them how? Yes. I mean, obviously, with ESPN's The Last Dance that uh, I... <laughs> That's what it is. I'm sure people are watching. But no, uh, the Habituation Room podcast is a live stream now. Also still a podcast that you can listen to. And it's, yeah, every Sunday at 6 or 9 o'clock on the East Coast time. You should tune in on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, UFace. I was going to say UFace, which I'm <laughs> sure is a thing. <laughs> um, so that's very exciting. Uh, and now available on Twitch, are you worried that you are going to become some sort of gamer? If I do, I hope that I can just build up the muscle mass that Hassan Piker has. Mm -hmm. So, Take him you know, on directly in that way. I, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Here, what's funny about me being a gamer is that if you want to just watch someone try to make it through the same corner thirty <laughs> times, but not be able to like time the jumps properly, mm -hmm. I'm your girl. Like, if you want to watch that fire. <laughs> I, I'm going to blow up on Twitch. Yeah, there you go. You should be set. Well, everyone, uh, tune into that. should be very exciting. Um, what, what are some of the things you talked about on the, the first uh, the episode when you came well, back? We had a clinical lab scientist who's working on COVID-19 testing right now, um, and she walked us through what she's doing, how she's trying to make it faster, and what bothers her the most about the amount of disinformation. Yeah. Um, basically, we're not being patient enough, and in an ideal world, we'd all – stay home and actually lock down the way that countries like South Korea and even Wuhan have done. So yeah. Uh, is she concerned about 5G? She just, <laughs> she said, quote, that's too many G's. And yeah. then, you know, we all agree. Look, listen, four mm. is, uh, was already pushing it. Mm. Five. The last G stands for gross negligence. Um, by the way, <laughs> so some pe people have been mentioning that your, your camera looks great. Your audio is great. And then I hadn't even realized that you were wearing, like I was concerned about you becoming a gamer. You're wearing like full gamer headphones now. No, hang on. I don't have the side <laughs> mic. You don't. This but, this is full gamer. Yeah, you. but you don't need the side mic because you've got that bazooka pointed at you. It, uh, yeah, 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 it's true. There the, is actual, yeah. And the quality is very good. Thank you. So anyway, uh, this is what we've got planned for you, everyone. We're going to be talking about Inspectors General, everyone's favorite topic. Uh, vote suppression uh, being planned. Uh, some of the protests, Fox and Friends spent a bit of time at the gym, so that should be exciting. Um, what's been going on after these lockdown protests? Science is, uh, scientists have been uh, weighing in. And uh, Elon Musk, how did he spend uh, the weekend? That should be fun. You know, we're, we're not going to do like a full thing on it. Um, but I, but I am curious. Just to start off, did did you watch any of uh, uh, President Obama's um, commencement uh, address from the weekend? I did. I definitely did. I mm -hmm. also watched Nas versus Ludacris on Instagram. But mm -hmm. which which was... did you prefer? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Nas versus Ludacris. But yeah, of course I watched the commencement. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, graduation. I, I, I forgot which one is which. Yeah, I don't. Uh, he gave a speech. I don't know. Um, but anyway, uh, p people seem to like it, and I'm sure that if you were, you know, if you went to one of these schools, uh, it's nice to have any sort of normalcy whatsoever, let alone you know a former president paying attention to you. Um, and and we're not going to talk about like Trump attacking because it's a complete waste of time, or even Karl Rove and his racist attacks. Um, I just want to say like, so obviously, you know, we at TYT we were incredibly, incredibly, we got Alexa going on in the room. Uh, we we're incredibly <laughs> critical. Hey, Alexa, I'm doing a show. Uh, incredibly critical of, of President Obama when we thought he merited it during his eight years as president. Um, but I realized, like, so he did, people were tweeting out the clips. And, like, a lot of people's, like, knee-jerk thing is, like, like I gotta, like, say something. Like, oh, everybody's happy about him. I gotta say, like, everybody's like, oh, it's nice to see a, you know, a president who doesn't, you know, just spout off racist comments constantly. And so, like, other, like people have to, like, strike back. And I realized that's just not the sort of person I, like... Just let people enjoy it. Like, 
90,000 people have died. If it brings them like three seconds of contiguous joy, yeah. just let them enjoy it for a second. Jesus, we already went over everything. As many people as we've been able to educate about drone strikes and single pair and everything, we've done that. Yeah, yeah. people be happy for a brief second, damn it. Yeah, you got five, five, min ten minutes of just a li feeling like maybe there's an adult somewhere. That's mm -hmm. it. Allow people that. Yeah. Anyway. Um, okay. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot of adults, so we're going to turn to what some of what passes for adults have been doing recently. And, uh, you know, hopefully I'm going to have done all the tech stuff. B between Friday and coming back on Monday, I forget everything about doing this job, but I'm going to do my best, so we're going to press on. At the close of business last week, uh, Donald Trump fired yet another inspector general. This is something he's been on a, doing a, on a tear, really, over the past couple of months. Um, this one in particular was an inspector general for the State Department, and the firing seems suspicious for a number of different reasons. Uh, the State Department inspector general was reportedly investigating whether Secretary of State Mike Pompeo required a staffer to carry out personal chores when President Donald Trump fired him Friday night. Uh, according to the Washington Post, this is uh, Steve Linick is the inspector general, quote, was looking into allegations that a staffer for Secretary of State Mike Pompeo was performing domestic errands and chores, such as handling dry cleaning, walking the family dog and making restaurant reservations in violation of federal law. Trump replaced Linick with Stephen Acard, a U.S. diplomat and close ally of Vice President Mike Pence. So, so far, to start off with that stuff, it seems incredibly petty, um... To, to fire him for that reason, uh, perhaps an equal level of pettiness with some of the previous firings of uh, Inspectors General. Um, we do have other explanations, but I, I, I've been curious, as you've gone through the weekend, what have, what have you made of this story? I mean, this is just one of those stories that um, seems to kind of blow through and everyone is kind of like, oh, of course, obviously, oh, yeah, consolidation of power, oh, yeah, obliterating, you know, any form of uh, justice and uh, accountability. But, like, this is really not the moment to allow it to just blow over us. Like we really need to understand that, uh, listen, I love to make fun of this administration for being like, you know, uh, dumb fascists, but I do <laughs> feel like if they get four more years in office, they are setting themselves up to be very smart fascists. I mean, what is the point of having an inspector general if they can be immediately fired by the president, right? And if every loyalist from some administration, like where, where were the checks in place to prevent something like that from happening? Shouldn't an inspector general only be fired by Congress? So these are kinds of the protections that this country doesn't have. And now we're seeing, you know, a, an administration that th thinks it's above the law, completely utilizing it to its advantage. Yeah. Yeah. And what, so what's the point of having them if they can just be dismissed at any time, um, you know, at, on a late Friday, hopefully no one notices that sort of thing. Um, and what's the point of having an inspector general if you just choose some loyalist to hold the position? It's very convenient because then people like sort of believe that there's oversight hypothetically. I mean, there is an inspector general, but they're never, ever going to do anything. Um, so it seems sort of pointless. And, and I... I certainly agree. Like he's he's fired multiple. We're gonna we're gonna go through some of the others. Um, like the idea that let's say we roll around in December, January, he's getting ready to start his second term. That there's gonna be anyone left who's <laughs> gonna be doing this sort of stuff. Like, and that's why what I've been saying over the past few weeks is it is one thing to go through a three or four year period where you are having to respond to one horrible act of corruption or criminality or unethical behavior or whatever after another. It's another to have a four year period where you never even find out about those because there's literally no one left in the room to let you know what's happening. There's no checks and balances whatsoever. Um, and we're going to have more on that. But that's really my fear is that uh, the next four years might seem less stressful, but only because we will be far more in the dark than we've been during the first term. Mm. Scary stuff. Yeah. So um, let, let's catch up a little bit on what's been going on. So uh, for those keeping score, it was late on a Friday in early April. So again, late on a Friday in early April when Trump fired the IG for the intelligence community. A few days later, he uh, ousted the IG helping oversee the $2.2 trillion economic aid initiative. Late on a Friday on May 1st, the inspector general for the Department of Health and Human Services was shown the door. So all of these like, he would have no reason to have any sort of vested interest in the oversight in intelligence, a huge quantity of aid that he's giving out, given out, and then health and human services during a pandemic. And the thing is, 
like I guess I'm glad that we made it to Monday and this one is still a story. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Those should still be stories. He got away Absolutely. with those. So yeah, why, I missed why would a couple he fire of Steve Linick? This was his second firing of an inspector general of the week. Mm hmm Right? Like, there was one on Wednesday, and then I another one on- I can't keep track of all of them. No, I can't keep track. Um, and, you know, they, they've been replaced by people. There are some people there that are hypothetically still- Inspector Generals, but they're chosen based on uh, a close... Like, we should feel lucky that this one was an ally of Mike Pence. Maybe he could be 5% rogue, you know, if he believes that Mike Pence's interests don't necessarily line up perfectly with Donald Trump. Uh, but for the others, like, he's just going to take... He's gonna, it's going to be like the post office. It's going to be some big major donor um, who's put in there to advance his agenda. Right. And uh, while we... You know, I'm glad, like I said, that this one is news. Um, I don't necessarily have a lot of hope that much is going to be done about it. Um, there's a lot of headlines about, like, Mitt Romney... Is being very critical of him for doing this. You have uh, Senator Susan Collins, who tweeted, uh, I have long been a strong advocate for the inspectors general. They are vital partners in Congress's effort to identify inefficient or ineffective government programs and to root out fraud and other wrongdoing, uh, which is objectively true. She goes on to say, the president has not provided the kind of justification for the removal of IG Linux required uh, by this law. Obviously. But what's sort of ironic about that is that Susan Collins, who wants to appear there, like, she's providing oversight. She's not just, you know, in lockstep with the rest of the Republican Party. Remember what she said uh, when Donald Trump evaded accountability after being impeached by the House? She said this. I believe that the president has learned from this case. What do you believe the president has learned? The president has been impeached. There has been criticism by both Republican and Democratic senators of his call. I believe that he will be much more cautious in the future. Yeah, so she voted to acquit him because he's already learned his lesson. He's going to be much more cautious. And I think that she was right. Just not more cautious in not breaking the rules, but more cautious in making sure that he's surrounded by only people who will allow him to get away with breaking the rules. So That's she a really can, good point. She can put up a tweet or two. What are you going to do about it? You already voted to let him go. And we said at the time, how many times did we say, if you tell him it was okay to do what he did, and he's gotten through the whole impeachment thing, he's not removed from office, the only thing he will have learned is that there will be no consequences whatsoever. Because we went right, right to the brink, and then we stepped back. She stepped back. So don't give me your tweets. I don't give a damn what, what you tweet. Do something. But of course, she's not going to. Well, and first of all, can I just say, every time I listen to Susan Collins, I feel like I'm out of breath. That's very weird. Like, I was like, I need to break. Anyway, point is, uh, I don't I don't care about Susan Collins. I don't have to respect her at all, all right? Mm -hmm. She's thrown this country under the bus and her constituency under the bus multiple times. Um, she's thrown women under the bus with, you know, uh, the appointment of Brett Kavanaugh. Um, can I just say, though, that, like, her tweet is perfectly encapsulates what's wrong, I think, with the leaders of this country, which are which is that so long as there's an inspector general somewhere and they can issue a report, but we're not going to act on that report, but we're not going to take it to heart. I can sort of sit comfortably knowing that there is a waft or a whiff of accountability, but it doesn't actually mean anything. And I mm -hmm. think that she's not so different from Democrats, right? Like Democrats also you know, sit sit on their laurels when they know that they're supposedly, oh, the other the inspector general is there, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we're generally checking the boxes, but are we actually rooting out the corruption when it appears? No. And do we actually have checks and balances so that an inspector general can't be fired in the way that we've seen? No. And so again, greatest democracy on earth. Wow, how you can obliterate it in just four years. Yeah, and uh, I read, I, I don't have it right here, I don't think, but there was a quote from Nancy Pelosi where, and it's not even that she was wrong, but she's like, well, you know, of course the president can fire anyone whenever they want, but he does look a little bit suspicious and we're going to look into it. Like, what, do you, what do you think? He fired him because, like, he did a performance review and the guy wasn't putting in enough hours, like he was concerned about his efficiency? Or No, no, <laughs> no. There is only one thing that gets you promoted by Trump, one thing that gets you fired by Trump. It is ridiculous exaggerated over the top loyalty if you, either mm -hmm. you got it or you don't that's it mm -hmm. anyway um let, let's transition to um a related issue 
The story coming out of the weekend is that the State Department Inspector General was likely fired because uh, Steve Linick was uh, investigating Mike Pompeo, either because he was using aides to do, you know, like run laundry and errands and things like that, or some people believe because he'd been misusing uh, government funds to travel to Kansas in what is believed to have been sort of the beginning of a shadow campaign to run for Senate. That is the overwhelming story, but there is one beginning today that might be worth a little bit of thought, and uh, I saw this from uh, Josh Lederman at NBC News tweeted, Just in, two sources confirmed to me that State Department IG Linick was also investigating uh, use of emergency declaration last year to sell arms to Saudis over objections of Congress. We found out also that aides for lawmakers serving in the House Foreign Affairs Committee tell the Washington Post Greg Sargent that the investigation into the Saudi arms sale had been mostly completed, although there's no timetable for when the results would have been made public. Apparently, the State Department had been briefed on Linux conclusions, uh, and we don't know if it's directly tied to his firing. It does seem timely, though. Now, of course, he's, he's going to have been working on something around the time that he's fired, so let's not go crazy here. Um, but if he was investigating uh, the, the, the measures that Donald Trump had taken, the steps he had taken to justify the use of more sales of arms uh, to Saudi Arabia, that certainly seems worthy of a bit of investigation. Yeah, I mean, getting someone to walk your dog, selling weapons to Saudi Arabia, tomato, tomato, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, I do. It's, look, look, the war in Yemen is uh, not ghastly enough. I get it. Like, you just got to speed it up, mm -hmm. sell more weapons to Saudi Arabia. Um, of course, of course, Pompeo was involved in that. Pompeo is, is, huh, I mean, another loyalist who believes he's completely above the law. This guy, he's, it's Christmas Day for Mike Pompeo. Um, and once again, I don't know how these people get confirmed. I don't know how they, obviously the Democrats don't control Senate, but uh, I feel like with Barr and with Pompeo, we saw this coming m miles away, mm -hmm. years in advance before they were even nominated. Yeah, well, certainly in the case of Barr, Trump definitely did. I mean, Barr had that letter as an audition um, attacking the Mueller report. That was the only reason that he was put there uh, to begin with. Pompeo, like, I think that Pompeo has done a pretty good job of appearing less insanely radical and partisan uh, when he is. He is an extremist. Um, right. And, and, and God only knows what he's getting up to in, in the State Department right now. It might be... I mean, certainly he could be tied in with the the, the arms sale. That is entirely possible. If, if something, you know, clearly unethical or possibly illegal happened, it, it's possible that he was involved. Um... But but we know that the State Department throughout the, the, the entirety of Donald Trump's first term has been at either a shadow or a laughingstock of what its intent is. Um, and so I, I don't know what's going to come of this. Perhaps nothing. If the State Department had already been briefed on the conclusions, perhaps that will come out. It could be quashed. It could be leaked. Um, and then maybe we'll figure out at least it is making news. And so there is at least some chance that maybe the Foreign Affairs Committee uh, we'll continue to look into it. I don't know if yeah. it's actually why Linick was fired, but it seems to make more sense than an expose is going to come out that Mike Pompeo had an aide run errands for him. That seems a little bit too convenient on its face. You know, I mean, I don't have any faith in the GOP anymore, but I do think on the issue of Saudi Arabia, there is some agreement, bipartisan agreement between Democrats and Republicans that we should not be writing blank checks to Saudi Arabia, the regular violator of human rights and kidnapper and murderer of a journalist, a Washington Post journalist. So like, the, you know, and it has been um, it's it's inspired things like the war war resolution actually being used for the first time mm -hmm. around around the war in Yemen, of course, which is, again, like linked to Saudi Arabia. So I don't know. I potentially this is a bridge too far, but uh, again, what is? Who knows? Yeah. Okay, with that, why don't we read a little bit of what's going, been going on in the Super Chat. Uh, let's see. Uh, Parnell Jenkins, thank you for your very nice thumbs up. Appreciate that. Uh, TXX Red Tash says, love all you guys. 6 p.m. UK is my favorite time of day. We are an evening show in the UK. I think we should really lean into that more. Um, I drink coffee at 6. He's so heavily caffeinated in the evening. Um, Rob Shively says, 5Gs, you only need 1G to operate the bird drones. The extra 4Gs are only there to pad the budget and put money in the pockets of Big G. <laughs> it's 
It's pretty good. Big um, G. Big G. James Partney says, happy Fantastic Monday. Alexa played Despacito. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mine doesn't answer to that name. I'll give you one guess what it does, given the options. Um, Emily Phillips says, yes, listening to her speak is literally painful. I'm not going to say that, but if you can't breathe, neither can I. So, yeah, I, I get it. I assume that it is health related. That would be my assumption. No, it's old related, John. Well, She's old. Those things travel side by side. They definitely travel side by side. I don't. I have like zero f's to give about Susan Collins at this point. Do not care. Yeah. Uh, Gabby says uh, on the hashtag TDR Live. Wait, you face? Did Frenafio just incept herself into Thirty Rock? Because now I desperately want to live in that universe or any universe <laughs> other than this one we're living in right now. Star Trek would be great though. Hold. <laughs> oh, wait. Give me one second. Speaking of uh, 30 Rock, I'm going to see if I can find it really fast. Parker Malloy had tweeted out a couple of screenshots from Fox Nation that were just amazing. Am I going to be able to find it? Ugh, I need to be more active on Twitter. No, you don't. I've thought about it. Okay. Oh, okay. So I want to show you this because these seem like they would have to be like SNL fake shows for Fox Nation, like Fox Nation gets announced and that weekend uh, uh, SNL comes up with shows. At least according to Parker Malloy, a person that I trust, um, these are real. So there's uh, this show, Live in the Bream with Shannon <laughs> Bream. <laughs> Live in the Bream. Uh, let's see. We've got, um, okay. I don't know if this is going to show up perfectly. Cooking with Steve Ducey is a real oh. show. Cooking with Steve Ducey, uh, <laughs> Ainsley's Bible Study, which, sure, yeah, seems okay. weird. I, like, does MSNBC have like a, I don't know, like a Quran read along? It just, doesn't it seem a little bit. I mean, I get it. No, but, but that be a sing along would be kind of dope. Uh, story time with Dana. That's I, no, come on. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Enough said with Tyrus. I think it probably is enough said. <laughs> if you just saw that, what would you assume that is? Like just, it, uh, just half an hour of silence. It's just him <laughs> flexing in different muscles, turning around. Enough said. Yeah. I mean, I have to assume from that photo that like it's his witty retorts to people who come in to his antique shop and the stuff they're trying to sell him isn't worth anything. Like, and he's like the, I don't know, he's running like a family and they're just trying to get by. I don't know. Um, there's some <laughs> other ones, but I really don't think that's not real, right? Guarding Jordan with Jeff and Abby Hornacek. That can't be. Oh my God. Stop trying to bite off the, the last dance success. Guarding Jordan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ugh, wiping the sweat off Jordan's brow. Well, not his brow, the floor. Like, were we interviewing mm -hmm. towel boys now? What the hell? I don't know. I mean, I get it. It's a big show. And against all odds, I even started watching and enjoying it. But anyway, like, I guess they lost Diamond and Silk. So you got to fill time somehow. Did, Living the Bream. Come Living on. Living the Bream is pretty good. Um, so two things. One, have you ever seen UHF? The of course. Old, wait. Classic. Ha cult. This, classic. This is Fox UHF. It's like <laughs> those little vignettes of shows that don't make any sense. Cooking with Steve Ducey is absolutely 100%. UH a UHF show. <laughs> yeah, except it would be like cooking with like Busey. Like, like that would be the one I would watch. Um, oh. Also, I just want to say, so there was a period way back when um, I was coming up with a concept for the damage report. We knew it was going to be a morning show and we were trying to come up with a name. And the name that Brett Ehrlich suggested was going to be Damn Sun because the sun has just risen. That That's would be better than most of these shows. Yeah, for, for sure. Very on, very on brand Brett. Yeah, I think he was, I think he was tired. Anyway, uh, okay, with that, why don't we jump back into news equally as important as the lineup on Fox Nation. Thanks to a recent court order, Republicans are gearing up to interfere uh, with the November election, but not in the way that you're probably thinking. All of those ways, too. But they have a new one as well. This Republican program, which has gained steam in recent weeks, envisions recruiting up to 50,000 volunteers in 15 key states to monitor polling places and challenge ballots and voters deemed suspicious. 
It's part of a $20 million plan that also allots millions to challenge lawsuits by Democrats and voting rights advocates seeking to loosen state restrictions uh, on balloting. And it's part of an overall effort to cast Democrats as agents of election theft, something that's been going on for a long time. So before we jump into it, Francesca, I want to let you know sort of why we're at this point where suddenly they can flood these states with uh, people concerned about voter fraud. So the efforts are bolstered by a 2018 federal court ruling that for the first time in nearly four decades allows the National Republican Party to mount campaigns against purported voter fraud without court approval. The court ban on Republican Party voter fraud operations was imposed back in 1982 and modified in 1986 and also 1990, each time after courts found instances of Republicans intimidating or working to exclude minority voters in the name of preventing fraud. The party was found to have violated it yet again in 2004, and I want to give you an example. At one point, I believe this is in 2018, the party recruited off-duty police officers wearing, quote, National Ballot Security Task Force armbands, it's not a thing, to monitor polling places in black <laughs> and Latino neighborhoods in New Jersey. Just to watch out for voter fraud. Not to scare people off, you know, just voter fraud. And mm -hmm. uh, so that was like one of the tests. Now it's going to be 50,000 plus in all of the battleground states. They can't win without cheating. Mm -hmm. Like Republicans cannot win without cheating, whether it's the Electoral College, which is kind of a form of cheating, uh, holdover from slavery, or, uh, or just straight up voter suppression. Voter fraud doesn't exist. We understand that it, it's like there's like five instances and they're all Steve Bannon. <laughs> like every single year. It's like, how many states is that dude registered in? Obviously, um, this is predictable and this is sad and this is what is going to happen. It has always happened. Like we saw, you know, Carl Rove in 2008 or 12, whenever his, he was like, he was live on, on television when Barack Obama was announced the winner and he was like, what? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, who am I going to text? Like you didn't do it right. Like he... The, these fools have been trying to cheat and suppress the vote for so many election cycles. And yeah, what do we do? We have to actually like combat it with real election security. Um, there needs to be money for uh, mail-in voting. And also, I do think there needs to be a counter effort from Democrats to actually, if there are going to be 50,000 people, there should be 100,000 Democrats. I'm serious. Like That's the only way is to actually help people uh, cast their ballot and, and exercise their right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know about at the ballots, obviously, in terms of actual activist efforts to send out people to get people registered and stuff like that. I'm going to conservatively guess that 90 percent of that is Democrats, because the goal is to increase the number of votes, which is the most uniform position against that Republicans have had over the past over our lifetime. Um, yeah. So they're going to they're going to try to scare people off. We already know we've how many how many elections have we been through? We know how this is going to happen. In the month leading up to the election, you're going to find out that in multiple states, I'm assuming that since Georgia is apparently trending slightly more blue, um, you are going to find an ev a Thanos-like evaporation of polling places oh, yeah. in certain neighborhoods. You fill in the blank what type of neighborhoods, but that's going to happen. Um, Texas, too. Uh, you're going to find that voting in Houston is going to be a little bit more difficult than Bandera this time around. Um <laughs> because that's looking like it's going to be tight as well. Wisconsin, a lot of concern about voter fraud in Wisconsin, even though, as you said, we know that the entire thing is made up. Voter fraud is one of the rarest things in the universe. It really is. And when you find it, most of the time, it's going to be Republicans. But honestly, I'll even allow that, because it's so insignificant and not nearly enough to actually sway an election. But voter suppression very much is, especially in a state like Wisconsin, which was, you know, in the, what was it, like a 12,000 votes or 11,000 votes or something like that. And um, really fast, in the Wisconsin case, there's an individual who's uh, involved in this effort and is saying, um, you know, we're not just looking for voter fraud in the areas where Republicans lost. We're worried about the ones where they won as well. I mean, if there's a place where uh, Trump got seven or 11,000 votes or something like that, maybe he actually got 14,000. So he's saying in his example that he thinks like 20% of the votes are fraudulent or stolen or something. Like, these are the people that say that COVID-19 isn't fatal enough, okay? Uh, but they think that 
one in five, one in six votes are fraudulently cast, despite the fact that there has never been any evidence of that whatsoever. No, this is this is the playbook. You're absolutely right. You have to suppress the vote if you're a Republican and you still want to win. Um, and yeah, of course, you have to go after black and brown communities. Uh, again, I just really wish we had an opposition party yep. that acted like one. I really wish we had a federal elections commission that weren't so partisan, right? We know that there is gridlock and, and that's about finance, but like it is absolutely related that all these regulatory bodies are gridlocked between Republicans and Democrats and they never get anything done. Mm -hmm. So even though we have all this data to prove that there has been, um, suppression and that there has been corruption, we can't actually change anything. And each state is now, you know, we've, we've talked about it on the, on uh, TYT a lot is using more and more um, automatic, you know, uh, uh, voting voter systems that are not sound that mm -hmm. can be hacked. And it is almost like a response to coronavirus, right? It's sort of Lord of the flies. Every governor decides how they want to vote if they, you know, want to go with, um, paper ballots or not. And so, how we can't have any more faith in our in our democracy than we have in our response to COVID nineteen. Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, I, I mean, the the fact that like for this long, the the fraud of voter fraud has. I, I feel like there's no response. Like like Republicans are just pushing all day long. Like Tucker Carlson will just do a full hour about the fact that there's tons of voter fraud, and there's there's really no concern on the other side. There's just this acceptance. Like one of the, the things that I'm most critical of, I understand it's not one of the, the biggest high profile, sexiest things that Obama could have done, but that when he had power, when he had control over the Senate, that they didn't do more to make sure that people would be able to vote, I find incomprehensible. And I will say that we, we talk often about how high the stakes are for the Supreme Court going forward. I mean, it's already been given to them, but even worse. This is one of the areas that effectively, if you let Trump put into, you know, into the states, 150 more district judges and uh, supermajority in the Supreme Court, imagine what they will do in regard to voting rights, the suppression oh, yeah. that they'll allow, the, 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 the clearly racially motivated suppression, and then let that stay for the next 40 years, have, have judges who are going to be up, upholding the most insane gerrymandering and voter suppression through the rest of our lives and see how successful you are in elections from here on out. It's already insane. It's getting worse every month. Um, imagine what they could lock in with a few more years. Okay, let's jump to uh, something unrelated. Oh, sorry, I got my graphics are a bit out of order. Give me one second. Actually, let me jump over just briefly to the Super Chats. I don't want to get too behind on that. Uh, let's see. Gregory Jones says, kids will get blueberry toes and pass COVID-19 around to everyone. Uh, thank you, Gregory, for your concern about the children. Uh, I'm worried about that, too. And we are keeping our eye on that the, the, the Kawasaki-like syndrome that we've been reporting on a couple of different times. Tovid. Tovid. <laughs> that should catch on. Okay, let's see. Did I... Is that? Oh, that's the mistake. That's my mistake. Okay, and uh, let's see. Uh, TNS93 says, my weekly John Oliver update. I mean, I haven't mentioned John Oliver, but I can. He had a great episode on uh, sports and COVID-19 over the weekend. It's pretty good. You should watch it. Uh, Z <laughs> Zane says, uh, Fran Fio, I love Fantastic Mondays. Hey, John. Thank you, Zane. Very nice of you. Hey. And uh, Zane, thank you for that. Uh, Justin Matthew says, John's echo prompt is definitely computer. You're correct. <laughs> it is. Um, and Chub Toad thinks that Fox needs a show called Chatting in My Corolla with John Iderola in the lineup. Like Car Carpool Karaoke, but political news. <laughs> I mean, that's not, that's not the worst idea. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the that's celebs. Great. But that is very good. I don't have a Corolla, but if we crowdfund, you know. No big deal. Okay, let's jump to something even more ridiculous. <clears throat> All this morning, Fox and Friends has been reporting from the front lines of people with uh, more resources than reason. It is the predominantly uh, upper middle class uh, white conservatives who are going around complaining that they can't get their hair done and stuff like that. And so uh, he's got one for you. This is Pete Hegseth for Fox and Friends. Uh, he's at a Belmar, New Jersey gym that decided that they were going to reopen, even though they can't, knowing that they would be uh, 
potentially arrested. And so uh, before the reopening happened, here is Pete Hegseth uh, in the parking lot reporting on the protest. But, but you've, you've got, got gym members here prepared to go in and work out. And Ian has pointed out, every job is essential. Why can Walmart have packed stores and crowds of people in parking lots, but he can't responsibly open his business, which provides a livelihood for him and so many others? They're taking protocols, taking temperatures at the front door. Only members can go in. Only 20% capacity. Social distancing inside. Okay. So uh, that's Pete Hegseth. Um, probably had been hoping the protest would have more people at it when he showed up. Let's keep it real. Um, but you go to war with the protest footage you've got. Um, <laughs> so so what did you think of his comparison between he doesn't understand why they wouldn't be able to open the gym, but Walmart would be allowed to open. He can't come up with any explanation. Yeah. Pete Hegseth, millionaire. What is it? I mean, Walmart is packed to the gills. That just shows you how much they respect their customers, mm -hmm. the workers. Like, what an mm, what an example, man. Yeah. Walmart workers who have been dying because they can't get PPE, time off, and who have been, like, videotaping just how horribly packed and not socially distant all the customers in there are. Uh, yeah, they've been whistleblowing and sounding the alarms forever. So, yeah, love the comparison. Mm -hmm. uh, clear That gym owner should be commended. He's like, nah-uh, I don't want to be responsible for your death. Go work out at home. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 sorry. No, this gym owner is going to open. I want to give him credit for the 20% capacity and stuff like that. But no, he he does want to open. Um, the difference really here is that one, uh, Walmart sells food. I mean, look, you got to get gains, but you got to get carbs and protein more, really, like to survive. Sure. Um, so that's important. Uh, also, like he, he's going to make that comparison. And he said uh, that Walmart is full, something that you acknowledge is a, is a significant threat theoretically to the workers. Um, so if this really is about being concerned about the working class, which Fox desperately wants you to think that's what this is about, have they gone and done interviews with the workers at Amazon warehouses, at Walmarts, which he says are full, at any of those? No. Is he is he advocating day after day for more government aid to go to these people to help them? You know, whether they live in red states or the, under the tyranny of blue state governors? Is he doing those? No, he's not. No, he's at this gym uh, because he wants to make a point. And the point is that it is good and uh, like it is patriotic to just reopen. And I want you to remember what he said there, uh, that this is responsible. 20% capacity, only members can be let in. And there is a high threshold for membership. You have to pay. Um, and social distancing and all of that. So I want to show you a little bit more. This is from a little bit later on in Fox and Friends. He continued his reporting, this time in a crowd with the owner of the, the gym. Okay, so uh, they're going to be very responsible. Social distancing and all that. It is a crowd of people, the majority not wearing masks, and expelling air as forcefully as they can from their mouths into each other. And he, of course, isn't wearing a mask either. The gym owners who were standing on the left side of the frame, they were wearing masks. They apparently value their life. Uh, others packed in no social distancing, many not wearing masks, it does not fill me with a lot of confidence for how this is going to go. No, I, I spoke misspoke clearly, I guess, that the gym owner is reopening tight, tight, tight. But yeah, the nothing is more talk like nothing says toxic patriotism more than infecting others with the USA chant. Like that mm -hmm. is just perfect. If the, you know, like they definitely will. And hell, that's your right. I yeah. guess in in Trump's America, hashtag MAGA, uh, yeah, you die for your right to spittle USA into other people's faces. Yeah, and imagine imagine how alone you must feel in the in the country if you're like a conservative and you think it should be up to me if I want to reopen my business. But I mean, I don't want to get coronavirus, so I'm definitely going to wear a mask, and I want the people around me to wear it. Like, there's. They've left you so far in the dust. Like those people, you cannot be responsible at this point. Pete Hegseth yeah. is not wearing a mask 
probably because Trump refuses to wear a mask and because he's surrounded by people who have been convinced in no small part from Fox hosts like Pete Hegseth that wearing a mask is part of like a Bill Gates inspired plot to control population. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we've got. But we should not be too shocked uh, that Pete Hegseth uh, is not big on the whole hygiene thing. I want to do a throwback to a video that you might remember. I don't think I've washed my hands for 10 years. <laughs> Uh, really, I don't. I, I don't really wash my hands. Someone help me! No, oh, that, no. I, I inoculate myself. Uh, it's just not germs oh, are not a real true. thing. I can't see them, therefore they're not real. Okay, so uh, and I get that he's joking there, but that's kind of the point, really, that he thinks that all of this is a big joke and doesn't care. Like we're supposed to believe that because he wears a tie and he makes a lot of money that he's either intelligent or serious or cares about the news, but he's not. He's a moron who's put on the air to advance Trump and Fox News' agenda. And that's what he's doing. And he's out there. And you know what? He's probably either going to actually get coronavirus as a result of this or is going to pretend to for some sympathy. Uh, I really do think you, you can expect that in the next couple of weeks because I have a feeling that the, the people who show up for that protest, who stand in a big crowd without wearing masks, probably aren't necessarily all that serious about protecting themselves outside of that too. It is just a pot that is boiling over potentially uh, with coronavirus. Yeah. Uh, what's Pete? Hell, what? How do you pronounce his last name? Hegseth. Hegseth. All right, that already sounds like a virus, but <laughs> um, yeah. Like you look at Pete. I don't think he was joking. Look at his yeah. face. He was absolutely serious. He does not wash his hands. Yeah, he's got. You, you know, some people just give off the sort of like the dirty D vibe. I'm not gonna say what the D is, but they got dirty D face and that guy has dirty d face i saw i saw your face <laughs> but it's I don't true know. yeah you, men you should wash your hands before and after you go to the bathroom i know a lot of dudes are like but i just touch myself like no you don't you touch the door handle you touch the t the actual like flusher right you touch the knob so you wash your hands before you go to the bathroom wash your hands after. you should wash your hands twice during honestly during you yeah. should wash your hands with your own urine Sterile, I hear. Uh, one last point on the Pete Hegseth thing. Um, if if you are out there and you think that perhaps I'm I'm taking too seriously what some you know idiot Fox host is doing, remember that Pete Hegseth, the guy that doesn't at least wants to jokingly make you believe that he doesn't think that germs are real, and certainly acts as if he doesn't think that germs are real or a threat, um, was almost tapped by Trump to take over Veterans Affairs, <sighs> the health care for our vets. Some idiot who's a Fox and Friends host. That's disqualification. Anyway, um, so we're going to see what happens uh, with that gym. By the way, how many of the people in that crowd do you think were actually even members of the gym? And how many are just desperate to be a part of this? I mean, you, you, did you see, you saw the Gelson's video that was going around over the weekend of the woman? I thought we were going to talk about the Gelson's video. Yeah, I live, problem. I live for the Gelson's video. I joined Reddit for the Karen memes. I yeah. swear to God, John, this is the best thing about the entire coronavirus. <laughs> is this Pete Karen? It's Pete Karen. I love the Karen memes. Like, listen, it's, it's beautiful. It's all we have mm -hmm. is just white women shrieking because they might have to wear a mask. Or mm -hmm. they can't get their way. Or they can't do their shopping when they want to. Mm! Uh, so I, I can't play the video. Mostly because there is a lot of Michael Jackson through the entirety of it. Um, but, but a lot of you have probably seen it. So we'll just very briefly talk about it. It's a woman who goes up to a Gelson's in... Uh, I want to say a nice area of California. I'm not 100% sure, um, but I but I've heard that it is um, the average uh, income or the median income is about 90,000 or so in that area, and uh, she's it's not Gelson's, wearing. Okay, exactly. you can't get like three things without $65. Exactly. It's so terrible. she's not wearing a mask, and she refuses to wear a mask. And when the the worker says that you have to wear a mask, she immediately asks to see the manager because that's hello for Karen. Um, and then she says uh, that I can't wear the mask because of a medical condition. And I can't tell you what the medical condition is because of HIPAA. He hadn't asked, by the way. She just offered that up because she had already had that prepped in her mind. And then uh, the worker who'd been very polite and got the manager and the manager who was being almost insufferably polite to her says, well, you know what? I, I you know, I'm totally sympathetic to that. So um, if you just tell us what you want, we will do all the shopping for you so that you don't have to expose yourself or the people in here 
potentially to coronavirus. And she says, well, no, I'm not going to do that because I would have to give you my credit card and that's private. And also there's things that I want in the store uh, that are private, which I guess is conceivable. But what's not conceivable is that you both have a medical condition that stops you from wearing a mask, have an obsession with um, private health information that you wouldn't divulge what the thing is and couldn't use a credit card. And even though you knew that potentially that's a thing that you were going to have to do, which is why you had the excuse queued up in your brain, you didn't decide to take cash, which you could have easily handed over and gotten at least some of what you wanted. All of that would have been a road you could have taken if what you had done that day was go to Gelson's to get groceries. But that is not what she did. She went to Gelson's to film a cell phone video of her being discriminated against and her rights being taken away. And it infuriated her that the workers were being so polite and so accommodating. And watch yeah. the video because a guy does a little bit of a dance at the end. And it's awesome. He's happy, even if she is physically incapable of being happy. I mean, th this... The this these are the same violations that black and brown people in Brooklyn are being tackled by police for, right? Like not wearing masks. Like she's, it, it's amazing. The Karen meme is it, just the gift that keeps on giving because in in the filming of it, she's proving her own privilege and and just watching how everyone is bending over backwards because she's deciding to throw a fit. And again, like this, I mean, you can relate it to like gun carrying. I mean, um, and you're you know right to like bear arms wherever the hell you want to bear arms. It's like your safety, everyone else's safety is suddenly secondary to your right to like, you know, carry a gun. Mm -hmm. Right. And like her, everyone else's safety is secondary to her right to not wear a mask. She's endangering everyone else by not wearing a mask. Yeah. I mean, this is our twisted logic of rugged individualism that of course only applies to white people in this country. 100%. Yeah. And uh, and I will just say, I haven't seen it in the comments because uh, the people that watch the show and participate in the chat are uh, generally sane people. Um, but the, uh, the retort of, isn't it my body, my choice, is not nearly so clever as you think it is when you apply to this. Because again, if a woman decides to have an abortion, it ain't contagious. It's not like if she walks near you, you self-abort spontaneously that's not how it actually works <laughs> we're not forcing you to wear the mask for your own protection although as a caring person i really do hope that you protect yourself and don't get a disease it's that you don't infect other people that's all it is i wish that karens would understand that but there is there is a desperation amongst a certain sort of people in america to be seen as and to feel like a victim they desperately want that which is why they're so quick, by the way, to throw out that accusation against other people, the claims of libs competing in, you know, like a, a victim Olympics or something like that. People who are actually victimized by the system in a variety of ways. They love to attack those. But like the like just ask, hey, could you not give me a fatal illness is an imposition that they cannot abide. Goddamn Karen. Anyway, um, OK, let's talk about uh, mass gatherings of Karen's. Oh. OK. Over the past month or so, multiple states have been the site of anti-lockdown protests, and thanks to the wonder of opt-in cell phone apps that track your location and uh, map that information, scientists have been able to show that uh, people attending these lockdown protests in multiple states afterward dispersed all over the state and indeed to other states as well, raising concerns that if coronavirus were to spread at these protests, which are largely marked by a lack of social distancing and people who are loath to wear face masks, it could infect people in a very wide area. So let's talk about what they found. Um, cell phone location data suggests that demonstrators at anti-lockdown protests, some of which have been connected with COVID-19 cases. We've talked in Wisconsin about um, people who were infected with coronavirus as a result of uh, going to these, are often traveling hundreds of miles to events, returning to all parts of their states, and even crossing into neighboring ones. One visualization they put together shows that in Lansing, Michigan, after a uh, April 30th protest in which armed protesters stormed the Capitol building and state police were forced to physically block access to Governor Gretchen Whitmer, devices which have been present at the protest site can be seen returning to all parts of the state from Detroit to remote towns in the state's north. One device visible in the data traveled to and from Afton, which is over 180 miles from the Capitol. Others reached and some crossed the Indiana border. 
Uh, you've got in the 48 hours following an April 19th Operation Gridlock protest in Denver, devices reached the borders of neighbor- neighboring states, including Wyoming, Nebraska, Oklahoma, New Mexico, and Utah. In Florida in the middle of April, devices returned to all parts of the peninsula and up to the Georgia border. So if you think for one second that the people going to these protests are at all concerned that they, in being exposed to coronavirus, might transmit that to other areas, like lay those concerns to rest because they are going all over the place and people are traveling far and wide to attend these protests and then returning to their homes and theoretically introducing something along with it. And ironically, like potentially returning to places that do not have the medical care that they desperately need. We know that rural hospitals have been systematically closing over the last decades, right? Like people, they probably have to travel as far to see a doctor. I mean, this is Mm -hmm. the pathology of Trumpism and voting against your own interests and keeping Fox News on 24 seven. It will get you sick. You are already sick with a virus and you just don't know it. Like you are so indoctrinated. I'm sure they're listening to AM radio that entire drive. Um, But again, and I do think this is why like Democrats and progressives and people on the left really cannot give up, even though it's painful, but the fight for like rural areas, it's like, you know, it's not, these aren't folks necessarily from the cities. They're in the rural areas and they actually like have their own struggles. They just have no way of understanding the world around them. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, I, I'm just so worried about how it's going to spread. And and I wonder in, if the idea is that they're going into areas that hypothetically might not have already had outbreaks, of COVID-19, um, like you say, maybe the testing infrastructure isn't actually there. So will we know immediately? I mean, at some point we'll know if people start turning up dead, those numbers, excess deaths will show up, but will we know? I mean, we're already seeing some indication, like Texas had its single highest day increase in uh, coronavirus cases uh, just recently. Um, I'm not ready to immediately say that's a result of the reopening because they are also doing more testing in Texas. It is possible that they are just catching more cases rather than having more cases. Um, But what you can't fake, I get, well, you can try. What you can't fake is the death number. So if we see the numbers in Georgia and Texas and Kentucky and states like that starting to go up, um, that's going to be hard to deny. Georgia got in some trouble over the weekend. Uh, They had apparently been doing some data visualization of coronavirus cases. And uh, they were like, moving around the numbers in non-chronological order to make it look like the numbers were going down when they were not going down. (laughs) It's ridiculous, but they were trying. They did get caught. So hopefully they won't be doing that in the future. Um, But yeah, I'm I'm really concerned about where this is going to go. The lack of seriousness every day. We're going to hit 100,000 dead Americans this week. 100,000. You're probably going to hear very little about it. If you're a conservative and you watch Fox News or you know, listen to Ben Shapiro or go to Breitbart or whatever, you're probably not even going to know that it's happened. And if you do, you're certainly not going to believe that it's true. Can I say one other thing? Uh, So we did a story about, um, I think it was a woman, she was like protesting the fact that she had to wear a mask somewhere. I don't remember exactly where it was. And uh, it was news that uh, she was uh, quarantining because she was experiencing uh, coronavirus uh, symptoms. So, like, the big news was, hey, this, like, huge Trump supporter had been yes, saying it's all a hoax, and then now she's actually got it. Um, so that news went out, and that was, like, a week ago, and uh, it seemed like everyone just moved on and forgot that she existed. So yesterday, I went back to her Facebook page, and I will assure you, she has learned absolutely nothing from the experience. In By the way, no one on Facebook tweets as much information or tweet posts as much information or just posts in one day as this individual just non-stop conspiracy theories about it still being a hoax still being made up like she she believed that she had been exposed to it and within a day or two she went right back to spreading misinformation and implying that masks are some sort of hoax that we shouldn't have to do it it was about bill gates and 5g and all that stuff some people will never learn she she will sacrifice herself for her god yeah. Yeah. Hopefully you're going to lose in November. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. So really fast. We're going to our last story. Let's catch up a bit on the uh, super chat. And by the way, I didn't mention it in the more in the, the beginning of the show, um, but there's still a bit of show left. So if you could hit the like button, if you haven't done that, that would be great. Um, perhaps Francesca's cat will wander in a frame. Fingers crossed. Ugh, woke me up all night. Yeah. My dogs too. They just walk around. Do they not get what night is? <laughs> anyway. 
Uh, ben Fox said, happy Francesca Day. Here from the real world, we are wondering, why do you still call yourself the United States? Are you united in anything other than admiration for the last dance? No, not really. Not even that. Yeah, we're states. That's about it. Um, I know a lot of people are mad that it's basically like a big ad for Michael Jordan. It's entertaining. I don't know. Certainly mm -hmm. not uniformly positive. Oh, okay. Uh, Charlie Ellis says, uh, no GOP president has won without cheating since Eisenhower. Uh, I can't confirm that, but it's certainly become very popular in recent years. Uh, Matt says, those marble races do look pretty cool. It's a reference to uh, the John Oliver show this weekend. He is um, the sponsor of, I think it's like Jules Marble Races on YouTube. Since you don't have sports, why not watch people race marbles? Uh, the thing on the left says, not only, uh, no, sorry, not sure if this is everywhere. At my Walmart, they only allow so many people in at a time. One-way lanes with social distancing. I was there Saturday. Yeah, I, I don't think that Pete Hegseth's comment about Walmart was based on an experience he had going to a Walmart. I think he was just saying that. Well, I'm glad uh, they're they're changing their ways a little bit, but that hasn't always been the case. Walmart? Yeah, I mean, from early on, Walmart was not yeah. taking the precautions, but that's good to hear anecdotally that in this one Walmart they are. Yeah. Do you remember um, when initially California was locking down and Disney was like, no, we're not doing that? Yeah. <laughs> they wanted to leave Disneyland open. All Disneyland is, is a gauntlet you walk through of sticky, honey-covered kid hands. Yep. <laughs> that's the yeah, entire yeah, yeah. park. The rides are just you on kid hands. That's all it is. It's just disease. <laughs> it's just disease. The The small world is the world of disease. Anyway, uh, Ghost Dog says the United Super States of Duper America. Yeah, I, I thought about doing the Super Duper Missile, but it was just, it made me too sad. Uh, Ty Johnson says contracting COVID to own the libs is in full effect. 100%. Uh, John's Venn Diagram of Desire says, John, would you consider bringing back walk and talk? Um, Yeah. That's a possibility. That might be fun. Um, I mean, the, the whole point of Walk and Talk was that it was very informal, and I feel like this show has sort of become more of that over time. Okay, let's jump to some of the tweets at hashtag TDR Live. Eclectic Miscellaneous says, Only someone who's a complete idiot, who has never worked out in a gym, actually thinks it's a good idea to reopen a gym during a nationwide pandemic of a highly contagious virus. Yeah. It's also probably overrepresented the people who believe that they're strong enough that they can just get through it like it won't, oh, yeah. be, a, won't be an issue um you, you all touch the same things like how how much do you think people wipe down? idris elba got covid okay yeah he did survive it though yeah but <laughs> true that's true what uh, i'm saying is everyone can get it uh they can so be careful okay um you want to uh descend a little bit into the realm of madness talk about elon musk for a bit always let's do this okay uh elon musk is still out there and he's still tweeting and uh yesterday he tweeted take the red pill for some reason so depending on who you are you will read that as saying uh he put the rose in so hypothetically he's referencing democratic socialism the, the rose of which is a, you know a massive symbol um, but more commonly in pop culture, that is a uh, uh, reference to the Matrix that has been co-opted by uh, first white supremacists, but more largely men's rights advocates. Mm -hmm. So I don't know exactly what he means, but I sort of get the whole thing at the same time. Usually when you become a father, you become more empathetic. Uh, Elon Musk has proved that uh, you become more of a POS. Like, you <laughs> just like, yeah. Uh, I don't know. He he doesn't even know what he means. Mm -hmm. But but also like, I the red pill is one of those things that like infuriates infuriates me to no end mm -hmm. uh, because it is a total misunderstanding of the Matrix itself. Like Elon Musk, it builds the Matrix, dude. Like he is the one who mm -hmm. loves. The, he is raking it in in the Matrix. He loves the Matrix. He's building the robots. <laughs> uh huh. Do we not get that? Like, you know that you've misappropriated an analogy from the Matrix when you've got a billionaire using the same language. Like, hello. Mm -hmm. But I guess if it's just about women, maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe he does. Maybe that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I know, like, obviously, your first thought is 
Didn't he just have a kid like eight days ago? And I know you've probably seen going around Grimes is, I don't even, I can't believe I'm saying the word Grimes. Grimes' mom is tweeting about how he should probably be paying attention to the baby rather than <laughs> going on like a two week long mental breakdown. And I get it. Having a kid seems really stressful. So I have empathy for that. But at a certain point, you're doing more damage to the outside world than just yourself. Um, and so I get that. It is really weird though. Like what is your, what is your wife supposed to think or girlfriend? I don't know if they're married. I also don't care that you're like you're joking about men's rights advocacy as she is like in the first steps of raising the child. I don't know. But anyway, um, if if that was all that it was, this has little to do with politics directly and I probably wouldn't have cared. Um, but it has taken a political turn because in response to take the red pill, Ivanka Trump tweeted taken. So she's taking it, which I buy, by the way. Yeah. And yeah. then Donald Trump Jr. tweeted, welcome. Oh, God. So I'm going to guess that if it was the DSA he was promoting, that's not how the MAGA guys are taking it. Is no. my guess at this point. He, he does not. I know Elon Musk does not know what the red rose means at all. Uh, and Ivanka... It's like, yeah, of course. We and we Ivanka has taken the red pill for sure. Mm -hmm. She hates women. She is a self-hating woman. She hates women. She hates Jews, even though she's married to one, I guess. Uh, like th that's very obvious. But uh, let me just say, um, if once again, misappropriation of the red pill analogy. Every morning, Ivanka actually wakes up and just downs a whole bottle of blue pills. Like that's all she does is eat blue pills. <laughs> To like to become the Stepford daughter that she is, who goes around and pretends to be for women's rights, even though she's not, and pretends that she doesn't hear that her dad wants to have sex with her. Like that's mm -hmm. all Ivanka does. So anyway, um, gross, 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 gross. Yeah. Yeah, by the way, um, so now that Ivanka and Don Jr. have tweeted at him, and he tweeted back to PragerU about possibly doing an interview, so get ready for that. That'll be cool. Um, I know the MAGA heads are like, they love the like the Red Bull stuff and the, the analogy to like the Matrix, but like, the, the idea was that Neo needed to open his eyes to the fact that a system had been created that was fundamentally based in falsehoods, not an accurate reflection of reality. As we speak, the Trump family is involved in a nationwide right-wing effort to convince people that a fatal disease that has killed nearly 100,000 people and is still rampaging across the country shouldn't be your concern. Your biggest concern should be um, getting your nails done, not having to wear a mask while doing it. And the next step, by the way, they're complaining now about having to wear the mask themselves. They're going to be complaining about the workers wearing masks soon, that even seeing it is imposition on their freedom. So just get ready for that. Like... If there is a thing to be woken from, it is the constant lies and falsehoods of the right wing. But of course, they're not going to see that, especially as they're actively promoting it and profiting from it as we speak. Anyway, I saw a comment, a guy saying, are you trying to be ignorant? He's clearly not speaking about men's rights. When has that been his thing? Yeah, it's about the DSA. I think he's talking about um, the need for more representation and corporate boards for the work. That's probably what it is. Come on, man. Or maybe he means nothing. But honestly, there's a certain point where, like, like the people who do the, the, the OK symbol, and it's like they'll be in a picture, and, uh, you know, obviously white supremacists have co-opted or whatever. And then there's the people who are like, I'm not actually doing it because I'm a white supremacist. I'm doing it to mock the idea that I would be one. At a certain point, thinking, pretending that you're a white supremacist stops really being different from actually being one. That's how I see it. And constantly Absolutely. joking about how funny men's rights are, at a certain point, the distance between you and a, a devoted follower of it, it's a little bit smaller than you perhaps want us to believe. Mm -hmm. That would be my view. Anyway, uh, so we'll see what happens next week. I imagine he'll be hosting a show on The Blaze by then. <laughs> we'll find out. Maybe. Anyway, uh, everybody, uh, check out uh, The Bituation Room, which is back on uh, all the streaming platforms, including Twitch now. So very exciting. Um, I am eagerly awaiting to find out when I'm going to be on an episode. That would be cool, but we'll see. John, you have a daily show. Do you mm -hmm. honestly want more work? I want more fun, and it seems like it'd be fun. And you want more Sunday. fun. Oh, yeah. Now the, the last dance is going to be over soon. Mm -hmm. 
And there's only two more episodes of Killing Eve, so my Sunday nights are going to be clear soon. So let's talk in a couple weeks. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's do it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, as always, Francesca, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Anytime. Have Stay a good safe week. Out there. Okay, everybody. Uh, before we say goodbye, let's see what's going on with the last of the Super Chats. Ms. Given says, I'm running about 15 minutes behind because I got caught up in a drunken history binge, but wanted to say hi, throw you a couple bucks, and say thank you again for all you do. I miss you all every weekend. Thank you, Ms. Givens. That is very nice of you. Hope you're enjoying the drunken history. Zane says, USA, 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 spittle is free. Can I has virus, please? Thank you. Imagine standing in a crowd and just screaming as loud as you can. I don't get it. Uh, MK Star says, COVID-19, the deadly hitchhiker. 100%. Robert uh, Agazino says, thanks, Francesca and John, for keeping it real and bringing some sanity to the table. Appreciate you tons. Thank you. I appreciate you as well. Hendrick says, keep up the good work. John, the only U.S. news I like to watch. Thank you. I don't know what that elephant emoji is. Maybe a Republican. But either way, thank you. Uh, Franklin says, must deny the science, yet space suits, they uh, do reliance. Bet you in space, it is no task. Bet you in space, they'll wear a mask. <laughs> exactly, Franklin. And I look forward every uh, day to your little uh, little limericks. Um, let's see, nothing from the Twitch, what's going on the Twitch over there, everybody? But anyway, uh, thank you everybody who took part, um, participated in the comments and the super chats and everything, hope you enjoyed this episode with Francesca. Uh, we've got Emma coming up tomorrow, there's gonna be a JR Wednesday and more besides, so stay tuned, we're gonna get through this week together, I'll see you soon.